Hey everyone, I'm Ellen here at eTrailer.com and today we're going to be taking a look at the Progressive Dynamics RV Power Control Center with AC-DC Panel and Converter Smart Charger. So this is going to be a lot of things all in one and we'll go over why you want this and what those are going to do for you. So basically, why would you want this? It's going to allow you to have one central hub for all of your electrical connections. So your AC shore power is going to come into this as well as your DC house battery power. Both of those systems are going to power different things in your RV. Typically the AC or shore power is going to run things like your air conditioning, your microwave, things that have a really high voltage, kind of more of your um, residential style appliances, hair dryer, coffee maker, anything that usually has a heating element is going to need to run off of AC power. Our DC power is going to kind of run everything else. So that's going to be our lights, fan, maybe the water pump, and some other smaller things. So a lot of times whenever you're still plugged into shore power, you think, great, I'm all plugged up, nothing is going to drain the house batteries, but since it utilizes a different style of power, those DC accessories like your lights are going to drain those batteries even when you're connected up to shore power. So by having something that's going to be a converter and having it all in one, this is going to power those DC accessories without you having to do anything. It's going to take that AC power, convert it to DC. AC just means uh, alternating current. DC means direct current, so it's going to convert that so one can be utilized by the other. Makes it a lot easier for you. You really don't have to think about it. It just does it for you. And this is also going to be a charger for our batteries themselves. So when our house batteries are hooked up to this, it's going to help make sure that they're charged so that they're ready to go whenever we do want to go off grid and run everything off of those DC batteries. It can work with both lead acid and also lithium, which is a nice improvement. It used to be that there were two different versions of this, one for lead acid and one for lithium, but now they've put those two features into one, and it's just a small switch that you flip to change from one to the other. Of course, you wanna do that whenever it's not hooked up or when you're just adding new batteries to the system, but we can look at all that good stuff right here. So there's gonna be the door comes off, does have one screw on the inside that holds it in place. Or not one screw, but um, a couple screws up at the top. There's gonna be four going all the way around, kind of mounts in with this flange going on there. And then there's a screw holding this down in place there. But I have all that removed just to make it easy here. While we're looking at it, we can take a quick gander at this door. It has a little chart so you can write down all of your breakers here so you don't forget what goes where and then you can also see from inside there we can still get access to all of our fuses these are going to be automotive style blade fuses so be able to utilize those and through this little bitty hole you can kind of see it but it's going to be hard so i'm going to take this panel off so we can get a little a little better look at it but inside that's going to be where we can find that switch for going from uh, lithium to lead acid and, and the reverse. So it's going to be this switch here that I have my finger on. You can see there's a little tiny LI and a little tiny LA. LI is for lithium, LA is for lead acid. So this little switch right here above my fingernail or right to the right of my fingernail, that's going to be the switch we're looking for. So it is something that you can reach and flip with just your finger, but it's a uh, a little bit of a reach it's very very small so that's why i wanted to zoom in as much as i could so you can actually see that but uh whenever you're switching from one to the other just move that accordingly so now i've got it switched up to the top so it's for lithium down at the bottom you will notice this little blue button this is going to be our wizard manual button here so if we want to adjust the wizard charger you can do it from that buzzard or button you might be wondering well what is the wizard to the charge wizard 
that is going to be something for your lead acid batteries. It's a function of this system that it's going to vary the voltage for your lead acid batteries to make sure that they maintain their charge and uh, get properly charged and thereby extend the life of those batteries. So basically it's going to automatically de detect the voltage that those batteries have. If they're low, it's going to charge it and kind of ramp up the voltage until it gets to a certain level, uh, pretty close to charge, and then it'll kind of level off a little bit and then keep them at a steady level at, and that's the uh, kind of float mode. And then every so often it's going to cycle up or ramp up that voltage to help prevent any kind of stratification or sulfation of your battery, which is, those are two of the main causes of battery failure. So it basically just helps to prevent any kind of um, crystals forming inside that lead acid battery that can lead to it failing over time. So that charge wizard helps to keep our batteries in tip top shape. You don't really have to do anything, but if you do want to manually change what mode that battery is in, that's when you press that little blue button in there. And it should have an LED light to indicate what function it's in, so you can have an idea of which one it is. Other features for this, it does have a reverse hookup um, protection, so if you happen to switch ground with power, it's not going to fry the whole system. That's going to be these bigger fuses here on the side. Those are going to blow instead of um, the whole system getting messed up. So that is kind of a nice feature that you don't have to worry about that too much. If we take a little closer look on the inside of our panel here, I'll back up a little bit so you can get a better idea of what's going on. We'll have our fan down here at the bottom to make sure that everything stays nice and cool. All our connections on the inside for our AC connections. It also comes with a couple of leads that have connectors on the end. These are going to be pretty nice to use. You just push in the wire you want to connect and then snap this little guy over the top. So really easy connections to make there. Get two of those to help us make some of our connections. And then it's going to be a similar system for the wires going into our DC panel over here on the other side. You can see these little guys, those little orange pieces, those are going to be also little snaps. So if you lift up on those, it's going to snap out or snap up. It's kind of hard for me to do this. So it'll snap open, put your wire in and then close it down. So it makes it pretty easy to get those connections in place there. Again, our reverse battery protection. Get a little thing of hardware. Just get one little tab to help attach a breaker and then uh, two screws to attach that tab. One, or one screw to attach the tab and then one to actually attach the door to this, but there's no hardware that comes with it for actually mounting this in place. So that's something that you will have to provide on your own. As far as the other electrical specs, there are gonna be a lot of things to keep in mind. The AC distribution rating for this is going to be 60 amp. Uh, it's available in a 75 and a 90 amp version as well. So if you wanna pick up one of those, it's gonna be more or less the same and everything else, it just has higher uh, power specs, but all the features are pretty similar. You can find those right here at eTrailer.com. If you want to see the other more detailed specs about the voltage and power output that this guy can handle, check out the description here at eTrailer.com. It'll have all those specs in the description for you. Uh, and as far as the other features, that's pretty much all there is to it. I hope this video has been helpful in deciding if this is going to be the right panel for you. I think it's going to be a great addition to your RV to have all of your electrical connections in one easy to find spot. You just want to make sure that you mount this in an interior area. It is not intended to be put into a compartment that has anything that's going to be flammable. There is a chance that it could have a little bit of a spark. So keep it somewhere safe that's away from any kind of propane or gas or anything like that. And also somewhere that's in the interior that's away from moisture or any kind of wetness. So that's pretty much it for me. Hope this video has been helpful. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.